Hello, welcome to a very informal video about uh, Chroma, which is some new music that just came out today. And I am recording this after I recorded the main portion of this video. And uh, be prepared for 8 gigs of RAM running OBS and my DAW at the same time. And uh, so there's going to be some struggles. Lots of lip desyncing and artifacts and uh, all that fun stuff. But uh, again, super informal. Just wanted to uh, give an inside look on the process and some of the recording of live instruments and some of the fun I had with the synths. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep saying it us. This is going to be cut. I hope you have a good watch. Here we go. All right. This is Chroma. And this track is... Uh, well, this whole project was... Uh, started because I was listening to a lot of Sarah Schachner and Ola Strand. And they are composers for video games and other media. Uh, Sarah works out of L.A. and uh, had started in film and moved over. And then Ola is over in Europe, and he's doing, um, he's at Massive doing uh, music and sound design for projects there. Uh, so this was, I had been listening to this stuff a lot, and especially Ola's, uh, around Christmas time, because I picked up the Division again, and that's a good Christmas game, and it, it's just so sweet. So I was like, man, I want to try stuff like this, and so I did. So here we go. Uh, what we're gonna look at is the DAW, and I'm going to answer some questions about the piece and the process, and uh, we're gonna listen to some isolated. Uh, live sections that I recorded because I record my um, I record a lot of the instruments myself so here we go we're gonna switch views and it's gonna stutter maybe um, this is the score or the DAW kind of snapshot of chroma and it's in score order so as we go from the top to the bottom it is uh, like it would be on an orchestral score uh, there's no woodwinds in this, but horns, trumpets, low brass, percussion. Instead of the choral section, that's where I put the synths to help kind of my brain think about it. And then strings at the bottom. The additional thing in here is the, is a violin. So a live violin. The awesome stuff about Sarah's stuff is that she records, um, herself playing in, in a lot. And pretty much everything she does. And gives it, like... Uh, a humanness and it's also like her um, so it's really cool so I wanted to try that and c try to like uh, mimic some of her sounds so I'm gonna I'm actually just gonna start with that that was this guy right here and you'll hear <laughs> cool so what you're hearing is a violin and it's been pitch shifted uh, down an octave and then the other recording there is down another octave so the original recording of the violin is gone and I had it in there for a while but it, it sounded it didn't it didn't sound right so I got I got it out of there but that is I just thought it was cool so that was that was one of the, and I'm talking about this because that was one of the main things I wanted to try here too was just something like Sarah's uh, string which she's amazing and this is nothing nothing uh like compared to her stuff but i just wanted to try it out here's another section with it cool so there's some bite there and a little bit of skipping because my uh because the macbook thing but yeah, some bite, some cool, like, uh, string stuff that's not, uh, uh, I don't know, it just has bite, that's all I want to say. So, with that, though, I did double it in, with, uh, Spitfire Audio Strings, so we'll listen to that first one here. Uh, 
So it's pretty messy and that's what gives it the character there. So it's not as clean and like uh, smooth and that's why it's good. So I really enjoyed trying that out and let's move on here. With that, uh, let's listen to the horn section there too. So this is, I'm gonna keep the violin audible as well. <laughs> So that was like a, when I showed this to my roommate, he was like, very much got like a, like a, like a seventies game show thing there, but I'll show you what it's combined with. And it's, it's a little bit hidden. Cool. So that's me and Horm, uh, just doubled. And then there's some octaves right after that. So combined with that is this cool synth I found and... And it's also in the beginning of the piece, which you'll hear. It's one of the main, it's kind of one of the main uh, instruments in this guy. But it's cool because it has these really weird harmonics attached to each pitch. And let's hear it on its own. And that, that kind of stuff really uh, guides when I write. Because it's so like, it's randomized in a way. And you have to figure out. It's kind of like a puzzle, so you have to, you have to have fun in figuring out. Okay, what sounds cool with this, and how does it, how does it lead to the next thing here? So let's hear that with the horn section again. Cool. Then there's some skippage there. Um, that leads into that another section with that Sarah string. So this is the second track called Gamma, and I, uh, I'm just going to talk about This is the one with the synth work in it that was fun to mess around with. So you'll see, or I'll, I'll talk about it in a sec, but this one was really fun and really more so influenced. The first one would be more so like Sarah stuff. This one is more Ola stuff, and um, I'll talk about why in a second, but... Let me get the questions up. So this talk is f more focused than the first one, which I just watched. And it's going to be, the title of this video is going to be an informal, very informal discussion or talk about uh, this this music. So I'll, uh, that's just going to be how it is. All right, let's do it. I'm going to put the phones on. So I'm going to jump right into the synths here. I tried a couple different synths. Uh, didn't repeat any from the first track. And zoom in, see some of these automation stuff. So this is automation and I can, uh, essentially if I look at the synth, right? And I mess around with knobs, I can tie the knob to be controlled through automation, which is if I had an actual synth, it would be uh, twisting the knobs, press and record, twisting the knobs. So uh, that's what that's essentially kind of what what this is here. And I tried a couple different synths. Uh, Podolsky, uh, what is this one called? OBXD, and that one was cool. And just combined them and uh, had fun with them. So let's listen. So you hear right away, this is very like pulse, pulse driven. Pedal tone, the drum. And I purposely, I can't stay, like I can't have just a single drone the whole track. And so you'll see uh, once we get to the middle section, I, I do have to change just because I can't stay there. Gotta move, gotta move somewhere different. Um, Let's highlight that. Cool. So very, very ambiguous. 
this piece was one that I did the uh, synth stuff first, and that influenced the uh, writing around it. So that existed first, and then the horn stuff would come later. So we'll single out brass here. It's a very like very wavy. So this is me playing. A thing I tried here, I think I heard it on, I forget where I heard it. I think a, either a YouTube, yeah, YouTube video, is that I used, normally when I do a brass section, I just have live brass. And then for the tuba, um, I have my trombone and then I pitch it down an octave. In this case, I did do that. But then I also added a synthesized tuba. So very much not real, um, but when you combine it, it has, it gives it, the tuba is really neat because it's very like, uh, it rounds the whole se brass section out. So it was cool to, I've, I had not had that before. So it was nice to get some roundness to that sound because it, it's almost like you got the low brass, if they're, depending on what you're writing, Especially in the, if they're in octaves, though, um, the trombone is like very forward, but then the tuba helps to round it out. So it was cool to to try that. So this is cool. This is one of those things where it's like my neighbors are probably wondering what's happening, because this is all very. Like, if you're in this room, it's all like, bop, bop. Uh, but I think everybody's at work. Usually, I record during the day. So, anyway, that's that's what I tell myself in my head. No complaints yet. Um, let's move on to the string section and just isolate that. Uh, let's So that was fun. That was just, I don't know, just fun writing. Um, also influenced about, uh, or by rather, what's going on in the synth. And let's just play the whole thing together. <laughs> The main focus there is definitely the uh, the synth that kind of like morphs open, and uh, thought that was really neat. Um, we go through that little section there, and then we come out at the end, and there's some more lyrical stuff. This was also this section, this piece, and then I think the next one as well. Um, ended up having like Howard Shore like items in it and you'll hear that here in the horns and strings as it kind of builds a lot of his work for uh lord of the rings has stuff like this minus the synth So a lot of the a lot of like really close build uh, scale type stuff, and I that just found its way in there. It's cool. Um, I want to highlight this too because I forgot about this. This is cool. It just was uh, I don't know. I just think it's cool. It's probably a bad note. <laughs> Thank you. 
cool. So that alone, there's a definite rhythm to it. Then added with the rest of the orchestra. Horn solo on the way top too. That reminded me a lot of Shostakovich, um, Symphony Number no. Five. If you need something to listen to, that's a really good one. Um, cool. So it was fun to do, and I think just the funnest thing was messing around with this thing. It's just so cool and then the vision uh there's there's like a ton of that stuff and it's cool because it's not like i think both ola and sarah it's like nothing nothing could be static it's always got to be moving it's always got to be uh it's got to be moving in a changing sense so it can't just be like bah, 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 um the same type of sound it's got to be uh pulsing but morphing and changing at the same time, either in pitch or uh, some kind of distortion or some kind of uh, any kind of change. And I think that's, I think it's awesome. So this is the final track. I'm just gonna jump right into this one. Uh, this is the final track and uh, it was going to be the opener. There's lots of, when I finish a, a couple of pieces and they belong together, there's lots of like, where does this one belong and moving shuffling things around this one was going to be the opener just because of the way that it started but ended up falling to the end and uh the opening of this one and i'll play it here it's uh let me just isolate the synthesized pulses it very much reminds me of uh, Johannes Brahms. He has this piece, uh, German Re Requiem. <laughs> German Requiem. And uh, it's it's a, such a beautiful piece. And how it opens is similar to this, where it's the basses and the celli. And uh, it's much, much broader. And uh, they just kind of like, starts from the bottom and then just grows until the, um, a chorus enters into an acapella, acapella thing. But this reminded me of that, just in the way that it opens in that the pedal tone, and then his harmonies over top. I'm gonna just do the strings here. Cool, and that with that pulse. I don't know, man. It just just reminded me of that a lot. Um, I'm going to isolate the horns and the low brass next. This is another instance of um, some Howard Shore-like writing. And um, let's play that here. So it's very like, there's a specific section in the Fellowship of the Ring where, um, <laughs> I won't spend a lot of time on this, but uh, it's the Fellowship and they're passing over the mountains and there's a, I think they're called Crebane, Crebane, and it's crows essentially. Gimli looks at it and he's like, cloud, it's moving fast against the wind. And then they figure out it's, it's spies from um, Saruman. And that section is awesome because it, it's like, it builds like this, but it, there's this really th like thick harmony in the brass. And it doesn't just last for like, you, you can't tell that there's like 
beats to it or like it's not structured it's just like very much a fermata that's that's a very that's of course beaded through but um it's just unexpectedly long and broad and just like it's just perfect it's really cool so that that reminded me of this section here i'll play that the extended chord here so imagine the harmony like like thick like that but just held out and it's just perfect that's such a that's such a great moment um let's move on here this is the other uh piece of music that this reminded me of was howard hansen um symphony number no. three which is really great too and i'm gonna i'll link i'll link a bunch of pieces at the bottom here but um specific specifically how the, his horn writing is and john williams a lot as well um the way that they write for their horns certain harmonies major seven harmonies their voice really uh really lovely and close usually usually close voicings for that uh for that minor second that's in that harmony but i'll play an example here So, yeah, I just like those harmonies a lot. Another thing too, this this is just a random trigger too. Uh, Michael Giacchino wrote music for a Spider-Man game back in the day, and there's a boss fight with Mysterio, and which is funny because he just did well, not just, but uh, he wrote music for Far From Home, which is the new one, the newer one uh, with Tom Holland and. Uh, mysterious a villain in it but he, I didn't hear any of this in it but for that original Spider-Man game that he did um, I believe it was on PS2 and Xbox uh, there was a Mysterio fight and it was really neat because he had harmonies like this so major seven harmonies but then he would drop the seventh and that seventh would lead into the next harmony excuse me guys would lead into the next harmony which would then be the uh, major seventh of that harmony so it's really cool so same kind of thing here it's just like i didn't do the exact same thing but it ended up reminding me of that because it's like uh the harmony there and then it half step down right there and it was cool um yeah all those guys hansen uh hansen williams and man i can't think of there's another composer british guy and I can't remember his name, but the way that he wrote for horns too was very much, uh, uh, very much like that too. I, I'm gonna, f I had to look it up. I'll put it in the description. Um, but this was a cool one, and I like this one a lot, just because it was, it was not so much about pulse. It was more about harmonies and moving through it. And the title of it is is uh, cool because it talks about light and refracting light and how it meshes into each other and it just it just fits right on fits right on so that's it thanks for watching uh music is out now on spotify apple music it's called chroma um i want to just acknowledge uh the influences again and that would be sarah shackner and ola strand and then the other names i mentioned michael giacchino uh, John Williams, uh, and Johannes Brahms, <laughs> who is very much not alive, but his work is still very, uh, you're able to get it wherever. And, uh, I will figure out, man, I still can't remember that British guy, but I will look him up and link, link to his piece below. He did a piece for the, uh, Crown and... Another piece called Spitfire something, and I can't remember it. It's awesome, though, and everybody should check out the links. I uh, hope you enjoy it. It's called Chroma, and uh, let me know if you uh, like this style of video, uh, something informal, and taking a look at um, the score and the DAW. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a good day.